All right, Mac and Justin, come on up. We have, uh, how many remember the Wallers? They're the ones who do the great harvest, how you veil. And uh, we have Justin Hilton and Mac Waller coming on up here. We're so grateful for them. Uh, they were in Israel. They live in Israel. And they're going to share with us uh, what's been going on and the things that they do. Uh, and one thing that I want to make sure that all the live streamers know, these fine young men can come to your location. And we'd love to have you uh, get a hold of their organization to have them come and speak to your congregation. So they're going to tell us how to do that. They're going to give us their website and all of that good stuff so you can sign up. Let's give Mac a big hand. Yay! Hey, man. It's good to be here. Yeah. It's, it's good to be here. Good to be among friends. Um, yeah, just thank you all. That was, that was powerful worship. Really good. We serve an awesome God. Amen? Yeah. <clears throat> Amen. And thank you, Pastor Mark, all of you guys, El Shaddai. You guys have been friends for a long time. Um, We've, I don't know when the first time we came out here was, but like long, long time ago. I was probably like down here somewhere. Um, I, I don't remember coming out here. That's how young I was. Like it was a long time ago. A bunch of my brothers, Justin's brothers, have been here. I've uh, been coming for a long time. But yeah, and you guys have been strong supporters. A lot of you guys have come to Israel. A lot of people from the group here. And um, yeah, solid supporters for a long time. And so yeah, just thank you. Thank you all for your support and means a lot. It means a lot to, to us and to Israel and to, yeah, just, just the, you guys are sowing in, sowing into the kingdom of God, sowing into what God's doing in the world. And that's, that's powerful. Um, so for those of you who don't know who I am, who we are, uh, I, I'm Mac Waller. Grew up in Israel. Um, my dad and mom started uh, the ministry Hayovel, that where we uh, grow, go to Israel and um, serve the farmers there. Uh, so our, our heart is just to, just to serve and to be a part of, of, of the redemption of Israel. Dad showed up 20 years ago, had no clue what in the world was going on in Israel, what God was doing, didn't have, didn't have a clue at all. And um, a farmer there opened up the Bible and opened it up to, uh, I think it was uh, Isaiah 61.5, or Isaiah, Jeremiah 31.5, where it says, um, you should yet plant vines in the mountains of Samaria. Uh, the planter shall plant, eat them as ordinary food. And then he was like, look, here's the vines I just planted. And dad was like, whoa, what in the world? He's a farmer from Tennessee and was like, there's not, you know, doesn't talk about farming in Tennessee in the Bible. Um, this is really cool. <laughs> so he was like, how can I be a part of this? And there's no Christians. There was no Christians over in Israel being a part. And of, of, of the biblical prophecies happening, it was just the Jewish people. This is farmer all by himself up on a hill with about, a thousand other Jewish people that lived in that community um, out in the middle of Samaria. And uh, so dad was like, how can we be part? We, we have to, Christianity has to get engaged and be a part of, of what God's doing here. How can we do that? And so um, first it was just our family and we just started coming to Israel and, and working and, and being a part of that. And um, it's grown and um, thank God we've been able to uh, just uh, really uh, develop a relationship, develop a, a, a bond with the Jewish people there. Um, that, that has, for the past 20 years, we've been working shoulder to shoulder and, and, and like, solid relationships, and, and they've become our friends, become, um, uh, you know, we've become very close. Like, we, we live there, and um, so, yeah. What we're, what we're here to talk about, though, is just to give a little bit of an update, like, from um, October 7th, how we were there. We were in Israel. Um, we actually just came back a few weeks ago here, um, and right now we're just going around, and the church in America does not understand um, the times that we're in, does not understand what's going on. Um, they, just, they just do not understand, and so Justin and I are, are right now on the road um, just talking, you know, trying, to, trying to wake the church and wake America up to say, look at guys, we, we have to get engaged with this if we want to survive, if we want to, um, you know, Really, if, if we believe in the Bible, if we believe in the promises of God, we got to, it, 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 right now is a time for action. Right now is a time when you've got to do something. And we can't just, you know, America is so, so comfortable and so easy. It's not going to be that way for long, <laughs> I don't think. Um, but right now is a time when it's a deciding time. Either you're, you're standing with God or you're standing against God. And 
there's, it's, it's coming really soon where there's not going to be this gray in between. And that's the problem. Most of the church is sitting in this gray in between, this area of just undecided and, and really an indifference to, to God and indifference to what he's doing in the world. And I believe that when the time comes to make a stand, they're not going to stand and they're going to fall to all the, all the craziness that's going on right now. Um, so just to give a little bit of an update from um, October 7th, you, like the atrocities that were committed, Pastor Mark shared a little bit about it earlier, like it's so atrocious, like you just, you, you, you cannot fathom the perverted level of evil that these guys, that the terrorists coming in, does. It's, it's demonic, it's straight up demonic um, attack against God and against what he's doing in the world. You, you, it's not, it's not a, these guys, it's, it's, it's unhuman level of, of just straight evil. Like, you, you cannot understand. Um, we've been down there, went to Barry, the one of the towns that was right there next to, you were talking about Raim, right there close, just down the road from Raim, right close to where the, the, the Nova uh, party was. And just, just going there, witnessing, talk to some of the people that were um, murdered, or some of the people whose family members were murdered and who lived there. And just it, heartrending stories. Uh, yeah, we got some of the video here that's just, you, you see this and it's just like firsthand, it's easy to, you know, you, you, you know, you see horrible things that happen, you know, other places in the world and stuff. But to go down there and just, you know, see this at, at firsthand, we, we knew some people that had family members that were affected by this. I have a close friend that was fighting in Gaza. Um, he's the son of one of the, one of the vineyard owners there in Samaria was fighting in Gaza, got wounded. Four of his guys in his unit were, were killed. He was right there, and he was in the hospital for a while. Thank God he's, he's okay. But, like, it's personal. It's personal to the people. Everybody in Israel has been affected. And because of our relationship, we know a lot of people that, that have been affected by this. And so, we, yeah, the American church, it, it's, it's, so, it's so apathetic to to Israel and to the word of God that they feel like this is just the same as any other thing, you know, happening anywhere else in the world and it's just another terrible thing. This is an attack on the word of God and on what God's doing in the world. The, the, the world and, you know, Biden and everybody, I think everybody was shocked the first couple days of like just the level of the atrocities and stuff. Um, but it's amazing how quickly that shifted and how quickly the same, the same, anti-Israel, anti-Semitic, anti-God rhetoric was resurfaced. Same, same, we're, we're back to the same, you know, anti-Israel everything, just in a matter of days after the war started. For the first, for the first maybe week, is, uh, you know, people around the world were, you know, pouring their support into Israel and saying, hey, we, you know, this is, this is horrible and stuff. Now we're back to the same level of, of anti-God, anti-Israel stuff that we, that we saw before. It's the same where, you know, and, and really, like, now Israel's being accused with, they're accused of, accusing them of all sorts of crazy stuff, and it's the same, it's the same stuff that we saw 1930s. It's the same stuff that we saw back in the Spanish Inquisition, the pogroms, the crusaders, all of that stuff. It's the same anti-Jewish, anti-Semitic, anti-Israel, anti-promises of God rhetoric that we saw, we've seen for 2,000 years. It's the same thing. It's this whole genocide thing, it's a, it's a blood libel against, against the promises of God, against the Jewish people. So it, it's, just, it's just incredible to see this, that <laughs> it's the same story. It's the same thing. We're back in the same times. And the church is so unaware of, what, of what's going on that I think it's just going to be taken <laughs> just unaware. Like they don't realize that this is the exact same. We're living in the exact same times. I mean, not the exact same times because the nation of Israel is alive and well and, and God has brought them back and we'll get into that a little bit later. But we're living in the same kind of situation as 1930s and 40s Germany where you had people that were saying all this stuff about the Jewish people that they were doing all these terrible things. And so yeah, like the, the protest on the campuses, the, the rhetoric that they're, that they're talking about is the same as the German, the German stuff that was in European stuff that was being spread before the Nazis. And if we don't thank 
that we're going into the same kind of thing, then we're, we're, we're naive, and we don't understand the, the times that we're living in. Signs that are saying stuff like, Zionists don't deserve to live, or people saying that, death of the Jews, swastikas, hail Hitler, stuff spray painted places. It, it, it's crazy. There was a sign they had, kill babies, rape women, whatever it takes. Um, and the police were escorting these people in their protest, march, whatever. Like, this, this, is, not, this is not rational. This does not make sense. We're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're gearing up towards, like, a level of, of, of anti-Semitism. And, and like I said, we, we, can't be, we can't be naive about these people's intentions. They, they don't care about genocide. If they cared about genocide, they'd care about the Burmese genocide. They'd care about the Rwandan genocide. The, there's, there's plenty of genocides in the world that they just do not care about. Um, they don't care about the Palestinians. They don't care that there's you know, babies and children being murdered every day by the Hamas and the PA. They don't, they don't care about these things. Their intentions and what we have to be, we, we, we can't be naive about what they're what their intentions are, they're, what they're after is they will stop at nothing but the annihilation of the Jewish people and the eradication of Israel because Israel and the Jewish people are the greatest testament that our God is living and his kingdom is coming. That, they're not going to stop. <laughs> Amen, yeah. They're not going to stop at anything until that this, this testament that God is, is living and on the throne, they're not, they're not going to stop at anything until that's gone because they're standing against God and God's will and God's plan. It's not, it's not about all, you know, they, they, they make up all these great slogans and lies and everything. That's not what it's about. Their intentions, they don't care. They do not care about all the, you know, the stuff that they, you know, they, they write their, their nice slogans. And maybe there are some ignorant people that get swept into the, into the lies, get swept into the, the, this, this, the, their narrative. Um, maybe there are a few ignorant people, but, their intentions are very clear. They, why, is there, why is there queers for Palestine? You know what they do to, to gay people in, in Gaza. They throw them off the top of buildings, and there's plenty of videos that you can find of them. You know, like, why is, why is everybody that's anti-God and against the principles of God, why, why do they all support, like, each other? Why are they all unified against Israel and against the Jewish people? Well, why, why is that? It's because this, this is what God is doing in the world, and, and they, they, don't, they don't want that. They're not having that. Um, so, yeah, we, 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 cannot be, we cannot be naive um, to think that they, these people want anything less than, than that. Um, I, I think also we as Christians, we can, we can you know, think, hey, you know, we, we, we support Israel. We, uh, we stand with Israel. For the past 2,000 years, Christianity has stood in, in between God and his purposes for Israel. We've, we have been the ones to, to be the, the people that murdered the Jewish people, that oppressed the Jewish people. For the past 2,000 years, we, we have a horrible history of, of standing in the way of God's plan for Israel. Um, in, in the Holocaust, uh, there were 20, 28,000 righteous among the nations in the Holocaust that stood up to the German, um, the German genocide of the Jewish people during World War II. And 28,000 stood up, yet 6 million people were murdered. Um, how, how many would have been killed if those 28,000 hadn't have stood up? Don't know, a lot more. Um, how many wouldn't have been killed if 28,000 more had stood up? A lot less. Um, but, but what's crazy to realize, there's 28,000 righteous among the nations that stood up. There's 400 million Christians in Europe. Out of 400 million Christians in Europe, 28,000 stood up. That's 0.007% of Christians. 0.007%. We, we are extremely naive to think that the Church of America and everywhere is going to actually stand up against this stuff. We, we, have, we do not have a history of it. We, and, and the Jewish people know that. The Jewish people know our history a whole lot more and a whole lot better than we do. They, they, don't, they don't buy that, you know, American Christianity is going to stand with them. They've got the, they've got the history. They know. 0.007% of Christians stood up against the Nazis. 
Practically nobody. Practically nobody. 28,000, that's, that's a great number. And we know, we know the people. We know the Corey Tim Booms, the, the people that actually stood up, and they're heroes. We, we don't know all of the other Christians that were actively standing with the Nazis and were preaching that the Jews didn't deserve to live and saying all the same things that these campus protesters are saying. There's plenty of Christians that were doing that. They're not the heroes. They're not the, the people that we, that we celebrate and that we, um, you know, that we make movies about, write books about, and everything else. Um, the, the Corey Tim Booms, and thank God for people like Corey Tim Boom, people like Willem Tim Boom, and their whole family that actually stood up. I believe there's going to be there's going to be those people. There's going to be the, the, the people that actually stand up and say, you know what, we're, no, not on our watch, not today. We're going to stand with the Jewish people. And I, I believe there, there, will be, there will be pockets of those people, um, but they were the exceptions, not the rule. They were not, they, they were not the, the, the main, <laughs> the main, Christianity was not, for the most part, the, the, the Tim Booms. They were, for the most part, just going right along, just didn't care, just didn't care. It, it wasn't necessarily, and I think that's what I see in America today, coming back from Israel, people just don't care. They, it, it's not necessarily that they're anti-Israel. It's not, you do see the, the extreme anti-Israel. People just do not care. And if you don't care, you will end up just going along with, with all of the that anti-God stuff that, that's, being, that's being taught today. We, we, live, we live in a generation that has the greatest potential to see the kingdom of God restored. The, the people of Israel, despite us, despite us, God has brought the people of Israel back into their land and, and is restoring the land. Despite, despite us Christians, despite um, everything that we've done for the past 2,000 years, God, God is, is at work and God is bringing this about and we're, we're not gonna be able to stand in the way of God. Thank God, hallelujah, we're not gonna be able to stand in the way. But we live in this generation that has the greatest potential to see the kingdom of God restored back to Israel, to see Yeshua come, rule and reign from Jerusalem over the entire earth. We, our generation has, is seeing things that no other generation has ever seen before. Like, there, when, when the Nazis killed six million Jews, there was no Jewish state. There was no, you know, vineyards coming back on the mountains of Samaria. There was no, you know, army of, of Jewish people that were fighting and, and, and killing the terrorists that are killing them. There, there wasn't these things. Now, the people of Israel are in their land, and we have, we have the opportunity to actually say, no, no, not, not again, not, not this time. We're, we're standing with Israel, and we're going to make a difference. And, and I believe that we, not only do we have the, the opportunity, we have the obligation to stand with the, with the people of Israel and with the restoration of the kingdom back to Israel. Um, they, yeah, Israel stands, Israel stands alone. Israel stands on, uh, in the nations of the world, we're seeing it just like Zechariah uh, 14. It says all the nations will come up against Jerusalem. We're, we're seeing this stuff play out. Israel stands alone. They, they, you know, like I said, there was, for a couple days after October 7th, there was a little bit of, of support shown and a lot of nice things said. But the actions <laughs> now are, are speaking a whole lot louder. Um, it, they're, yeah, we, we, we live in this time. So many, people, so many people get caught up in the, you know, well, Israel's, Israel's not perfect. How can this be the kingdom of God? How can, how can God actually be doing this? Because look, at Israel's got all these problems, and you know, people want to wanna bring out all that. I think it's really powerful. In Ezekiel 36, um, 22 through 28, it says, Therefore say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, It is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations to which you came. And I will vindicate the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among, among the nations, and which you have profaned among them. And the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Lord God, when through you I vindicate my holiness before their eyes. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will spr sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean." From all your uncleannesses, and I will put, and I, and, and from all your idols, I will cleanse you, and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. 
You shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. God is vindicating his holy name. Like, this is not about, this is not about the perfection of the Jewish people, the perfection of Israel, or our perfection to be used in, in, in what God's doing in the world. It's not about us, guys. It's not about, it's not about we, we, we get a little on our, on our high horse and think that we, you know, it's about us, and it's about what we do, and it's about, you know, all this stuff. God is vindicating his holy name. By bringing the people of Israel back into their land, it's about, it's about the, the glory of God and what he's doing in the world. It's not about, yeah, it's, it's, not about, it's not about Israel. It's not about the Jewish people. It's not about us. It's about God. And God, yeah. <laughs> like, like we were saying earlier, God, he's an awesome God. God. Our God is an awesome God, and he's the one that is doing these things. So we, people get caught up. People get caught up in all the oh, you know, the Jewish people, they do this. The Jewish people, the Israeli government, the whatever. It's not about, it's not about that. Yeah, God, God will, like it says here, sprinkle clean water on them, remove the heart of stone, give them a heart of flesh. You know, it put his spirit within him. He says he's gonna, he's gonna do all these things, but it's about his holy name. And, and so when we, when we get serious about the holiness of God and the holiness of his name, then, then, we're, then we're getting on his plan. Then we're getting on, you know, what he's doing. It's not, about, um, it's not about all the, you know, all the other things that people would want to want to pull your attention away from what God's doing in the world by saying, yeah. There, there's so many people that are just trying to take away from the, the power of what God's doing in, in, in Israel and with the Jewish people by, by you know, there's, there's hundreds of distractions trying to pull from that and trying to get people's attention off of of the amazing work that God is doing in Israel and with the Jewish people by anything. The, the, it's, the same, it's the same thing the devil always tries to do. You, some, God is doing the most powerful thing in the world, and, and, like, and everybody is just kind of like sitting around going, well, yeah, you know, whatever, you know, it's not, it's not actually that, that big of a deal. It's not actually, look at all these problems. Look at all, God is moving in the world. Like, this is impossible. It, it, what's going on in Israel, to bring Israel from the four corners of the world back into their land, restore them like pure language, Hebrew. We're getting, like, to, to see the restoration on the mountains of Israel, this, all, this stuff is all impossible. It's not, it's not, it's not possible. God, God is doing these things, and yet the world just kind of sits by and goes, uh, you know, we, we don't, you know, we, we, like, we think, you know, they, they go through all the stuff, you know, we, Israel's doing all sorts of terrible things, but God is moving. Like people are, get so distracted by all the other things that they can't see the finger of God at work. And and I feel like, yeah, thank God for people like El Shaddai and uh, that uh, that are recognizing the the finger of God at work. Um, but we've got to, We've got to do. We've got to do more than just uh, recognize it. We've got to get involved. We've got to get involved with what God's doing in the world. Um, and as we're seeing all nations come up against Jerusalem, come up against the, the work that God's doing in the world, we have to do more. And something that my dad um, started teaching a while ago, I think is super powerful. Um, it, it says in um, Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 3 through 6, and it's really, really interesting. It says, No Ammonite or Moabite may enter the assembly of the Lord, even to the tenth generation. None of them may enter the assembly of the Lord forever because you, they did not meet you with bread and with water on the way when you came out of Egypt and because they hired against you Balaam the son of Beor from Pethor of Mesopotamia to curse you. But the Lord your God would not listen to Balaam. Instead, the Lord your God turned the curse into a blessing for you because the Lord your God loved you. You shall not seek their peace or their prosperity all your days forever. So why, why were these people not allowed into the, to the, the congregation of Israel? Because they didn't meet Israel with bread and water when they came out of, of Egypt on their way to the promised land, and they hired Balaam, the son of Beor. It's interesting, in Jeremiah it says, Therefore, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when it shall no longer be said, as the Lord lives who brought up the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but as the Lord lives who brought the people of Israel out of the north country and out of all the countries where he had driven them, for I will bring them back to their own land that I gave to their fathers. That, that's what we're living in right now, this greater exodus. And if we're living in the greater exodus, what do we have a responsibility to do? 
bread and water and, and not hiring Balaam. And like, what, what, is Western, what is Western Christianity doing? What are we, what are we doing? We're, we're, we're promoting all of this horrible moral stuff that's going, you want to, do you see what the, the problems in Israel, the people want to point out all the problems. Where are they getting that from? From, from our Western, we're, we're standing in the place of Balaam. What are we responsible to do? Bread and water, bread and water, and not, not pushing all this horrible and moral stuff. This, so I guess that's what it comes down to to me. We, we can, as the nations, it didn't, you know, it didn't say they weren't accepted into the, you know, the, the, the congregation of Israel because they didn't accept the Torah or because they didn't, um, you know, whatever, whatever you may say. You know, they, they, didn't, they didn't keep Shabbat, they didn't keep kosher, whatever, you know. <laughs> like some of us may, may like to say, they didn't, weren't accepted because they didn't meet them with bread and water and because they hired Balaam. We, we have to, we have to, if we want to be in the kingdom of God, if we want to be in the congregation of Israel, we better be given bread and water and we better be supporting them in, in their role and in their they're what God has called them to. That's, that's what Balaam was trying to do. Destroy who they were as a people and destroy their, their role as, as a kingdom of priests, like, like Pastor Mark was sharing earlier, as a, as a kingdom of priests to the whole world. That's who he's trying to destroy. And that's what, that's what Western Christianity is trying to do today is take away from Israel. We're, not only are we going to not give them bread and water, we're going to fight against them, and we're going to push all this horrible and moral stuff. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's our role and our responsibility. I'm going to hand it over to Justin, um, and he'll tell us a little bit about like, what, what we're actually, what Hayuvel and the Israel guys is, is up to over in Israel. So, <clears throat> Really great message there from Mac. Um, now I want to go into a little bit what we do at Hayuvel, and you know, there's a lot of darkness happening in the world, Mac was talking about. But there is encouraging things. There is light happening in Israel. So as Mac said at the beginning, Haivel was started around 20 years ago by his dad. He went for the first time in 2004. For me personally, our families met before I was born. So <laughs> we've known each other all our lives. Um, really great friends with the Wallers all of our lives. My sister, older sister made the first trip to Israel in 2008. And then I came with the rest of my family in 2010 when I was seven years old. And we've been coming back and forth ever since then. And basically now I live in Israel. I call Israel home, live there pretty much full time. But yeah, it's exciting to be in Israel, to, to see the prophecies coming to life. Literally Isaiah 61.5, strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. Sons of the foreigners shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. That's what we're doing. We're the sons of the foreigners there. Um, over the past 15 years, we brought 3,000 Christians from all over the world, from 30-plus countries to Judea and Samaria to serve the farmers. Um, as of now, we serve around 50 farmers every year through pruning, pruning the grapevines, harvesting grapes. A couple of people here have uh, been there, harvested the grapes several times. Really fun stuff. Uh, also planting, uh, planting thousands of trees now that we're doing every single year, pretty much doing whatever the small farmers, small Jewish communities uh, need. Something else that we started after October 7th that, that we saw a need for is uh, a thing we, we call Operation Etai. This is based out of 2 Samuel 15, uh, where David is fleeing from Absalom, um, and there's, the, there's this non-Jew, there's, the, there's this guy named Etai, and he, he wants to go with David, and David's like, what are you doing? You're a foreigner, uh, you need to go back to your home or whatever, and Etai says, no, I'm with you. Wherever the king goes, that's where I'm going to be, and literally like three days later, he's like one of the top commanders in David's army. So this is a non-Jew who is serving the nation of Israel, not just at any time, in time of crisis, in their biggest need, this guy was standing with them, and so that's what we named this operation for. We, uh, our goal is to raise $29 million to bring in equipment, emergency supplies and equipment to the uh, small Jewish communities of Judea and Samaria because we saw what happened down on the Gaza border. The, these, these 
towns and communities, you know, they were, they were unprepared. And literally, in, in Judea and Samaria, there's a, a, a ton of Arabs there. And we saw the same thing could happen. What happened down there in Gaza, the same thing could happen here uh, in Judea and Samaria. And so we're saying, we need to equip these these security teams, these small Jewish communities, we need to bring in emergency supplies. Uh, El Shaddai was really connected with that at the beginning, uh, donating a lot to that. Thank you guys for that. It was incredible. Um, but yeah, that's another thing that we're doing. Another side of Hayovel is the Israel guys. Who has heard of the Israel guys here? Yeah. So we see the lies that are coming out from the media, and we're like, we, we need to do something about that. So uh, we're a pro-Israel media network. Uh, we reach millions of viewers every year. We're debunk debunking the fake news. We're uh, busting through the propaganda. Uh, one example, really crazy, at the beginning of the war, there was this, there was this news headline that came out. It, it, said, it said something like this, Israel bombs hospital in Gaza, kills 500 people. Boom, just like that. And it's, it's always crazy to me how they get their numbers out so fast. It took Israel, what, like three weeks or something to get the final number of people who were killed on October 7th. Within like two hours, they have a number out. 500 people killed in hospital. And it was proved. No, Israel went through. They proved. No, Israel did not bomb this hospital. It was a misfired rocket from a Palestinian Islamic Jihad. It was a misfired rocket that came in, hit the hospital, and it wasn't even 500 people who were killed. And yet, every single mainstream media news headline is still up today. You can Google it. It's, they, all the headlines still say 500 people killed um, by Israel. So we're, that's some of what we're doing. We're doing five shows every single week from uh, Israel, from the Mount of Blessing there. We have a small studio that we're putting out content every single day of the week. We're, we're there on the ground. We're like, we see what's happening. We know the real story, and so we're trying to tell that. Uh, to the world, also doing documentaries on the ground, uh, adventure shows, stuff like that. Uh, personal story, really encouraging. Sometimes we can feel that, you know, we're we're in an uphill battle, and you know, maybe our voice isn't making a difference or something. But uh, it was a Friday afternoon, I think. I was in the studio. It was right before Shabbat, and this IDF soldier walked in, and he had come. He told me he had come all the way from Gaza. He had a 24-hour break from fighting in Gaza. The first thing he did, it wasn't to go home to his family. The first thing he did is he drove up to Harbacha just to say, thank you. Thank you for your, guy, for your guys' work, uh, what you're doing at the Israel guys. He said, actually, there's a lot of uh, soldiers fighting inside of Gaza who are watching our news. So I was like, wow, that's really yeah, uh, encouraging. Um, I guess all of this to say is there's, there's a lot of ways that we can get involved. And I feel like Right now is the time for action. It says in Isaiah 52, verse 7, it says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Our job is to say to the people of Israel, if we can't go to the mountains of Israel, we, we, you know, we're saying, your God reigns. In other words, unconditionally support them in their full right to the land of Israel. Um, we have a couple ways you can get involved. Pastor Mark talked about it earlier. The Israel Summit, May 20th through the 22nd in Nashville, Tennessee. We have rat cards, which we forgot to bring up. They're in the car. But we'll, we will have rat cards in the back uh, shortly for if you guys want to check those out. Um, but this is going to be a really exciting conference. You guys won't want to miss it. There's going to be an amazing lineup of speakers, literally our heroes from Israel who are the pioneers in Judea and Samaria. They, uh, a lot of those guys coming to Nashville, Tennessee to give a message of uh, how you can support Israel. Full-on concert by amazing uh, musician from Israel, Yair Levy. That's going to be incredible. Also, a gala dinner at the end. We're going to be playing movies, different videos and stuff. It's going to be a uh, really fun Great time. Also, we have volunteer trips coming up in Israel. It's amazing to come to Israel to show support, especially now if you're a young person, if you know a young person who is looking for a challenge, the special ops trip is uh, the trip we have coming up next. It's June 19th 
through the through July 31st, I believe. But this is more of a hardcore trip to Israel. Um, not so much touring, lots of hard work, packed out schedules, uh, lots of worship times, discipleship times. Um, but really right now, going to Israel is different than any other time. On October 7th, it was the last day of Sukkot, uh, the, the high holiday, Simchat Torah. There were thousands of tourists in the country. October 7th happened, they flooded out of the country immediately. Um, people were asking us, the Jewish people were asking us, are you, are you gonna stay, are you leaving? When they found out that we were staying there in Israel, they were like, wow, that, that's incredible. That meant the world to them. And they were like, you're part of us. You're one of the family now. That like being in Israel right now and um, standing with the Jewish people, it, it's different than any other time. And it means the world to them to see people standing and uh, serving them there. So uh, yeah, we'll have rat cards for that as well. Serveisrael.com if you want to check out more information for our volunteer trips. Uh, I want to, to close out here. I want to read Amos 9. Um, here, let me pull it up here. One second. Amos chapter 9. Is it Amos chapter 9, verse 13? Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him who sows the seed. The mountains shall drip sweet wine, and all the hills shall flow with it. I will restore the fortunes of my people Israel, and they shall rebuild the ruined cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink their wine, and they shall make gardens and eat their fruit. I will plant them on their land, and they shall never again be uprooted out of the land that I have given them, says the Lord your God. So ultimately, we know God's got it all under control. He's going to give Israel the victory. Israel's never, Israel is not going anywhere. Um, the question is, are we going to be a part of it? I don't know. Do you have anything else to add? Let's give them a big hand. Thank you. Amen and amen. Uh, one thing I just want to add that you guys are free to use anytime you want. How many of you are familiar with the book of Ruth? Ruth is a prophetic book of our day. Here's what's important. Ruth and Orpah were both Moabites. They represent the church grafted into Israel. You following me? So what happens? When Naomi's going back to Israel, she tells both of them to go back to their homes. All right? In Moab territory. Orpah, do you know what her name means in Hebrew? to turn your back on, the back of the neck. She gives Naomi a kiss on the cheek, and then she turns her back on her, and it says she went back to her pagan gods. Ruth, what does her name mean? Friend. She says, where you go, I will go, and I'm, I'm in this with you. So we have the church in these last days that is going to turn their back on Israel. And then the dividing line in the church is going to be with those who support Israel, work the harvest, and end up bringing forth the Messiah through King David. Now get a load of this. Ruth begets King David. Orpah begat Goliath. And so the final battle in these last days is going to be the David church against the Goliath church. And it's all found in the book of Ruth. Fascinating. Well, let's stand. Don't forget, next week we will have Pastor Joe from India. Yay. Avinu Mokenu, our Father, our King, we just thank you so much for everything you're doing in all of our lives. Father, you don't want us to watch the game. You don't want us to wonder what happened. You want to put us in the game. This is our time in history when you created us for such a time as this. 
We're not here to run and hide. We're here to join God's army. And we're so grateful that you not only want to bless us, you want to put your name upon us, even as you told Moses to tell Aaron to say, Ivarekaka Adonai Vayish Mareka, Yaer Adonai Panavileka Vihuneka, Ye saw Adonai Panavileka Viasem Laka Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in that most wonderful name. Eh, yeah, Asher, eh, yeah. Amen. Thank you very much.